In the previous series of videos, I looked at uh, Cox, Ross, Rubenstein when applied to option pricing uh, without a dividend. Here we're going to incorporate in a dividend and we're going to start with a slightly different example where the stock price starts at 300 and then it increases uh, by 20% or decreases by 20% so that the stock price tree goes from 300 to 360 if you multiply by 1.2 uh, goes up to 342 likewise the stock price uh, could fall by 20% and that would be equivalent to multiplying by 0 0.8 goes to 240, 192 uh, multiply this by 1.2 we get back to 288 so if I double click here um, we have a spreadsheet I have the parameters set out and then the stock price if you like um, equal to the 300 starting point and then the stock price increase and so on so the basic tree structure is is intact okay so we can highlight the just holding down control we can highlight the bits of code here related to uh, the stock price okay or the bits of the the outline of the numbers here related to the stock price and this is a two-step tree so let's go back again to just looking at the question the stock price is currently 300 and as we saw it can go up or down by 20 percent each of the two time periods of three months so two time periods of three months means six months altogether the risk-free rate is eight percent dividend here included is three percent what's the value of a six-month put with a strike of 300 also where the option is european and then part b here where the option is american and the only difference uh, that really we have to uh, implement relative to where the option has or the stock has no dividend yield is with a stock paying dividend yield you incorporate in here a term Q otherwise there's no dividend yield uh, Q would fall out and the backward induction formula is exactly the same no change just here the risk neutral probability that changes and uh, to estimate the value of the option we follow the same steps as before we estimate the risk neutral probability that gives us 0 053 then we take that 0 0.5314 and we put it into the backward induction formula as seen here before and then we work out the value of the we have to figure out the, the value of node b node z so in what we have here this might be considered node a node b node c node d node e node f so when starting from here and we have to work out the value of the option when we get to termination to the terminal nodes on the stock price tree binomial stock price tree we work out the intrinsic value of the option and that's easily done by just taking uh, taking the stock price as before and then for the American option we just subtract away if it's a put option we say X minus 432 and if that's less than, than zero then we default to zero okay and likewise here when the stock price is 288 the value of the option is 12 because we simply subtract 288 from uh, 300 and likewise here when the stock price falls down to 192 the value of the option of the put option is 300 minus the 192 because it's positive we read the value as being 108 in order for us to then do the perform the backward induction we apply e negative r by t p c5 is the risk neutral probability by fu so fu would be here f9 is fu by 1 minus p 1 minus p equivalent to 0 4 6 8 5 5 1 minus p times fd okay so that pattern is the same exactly the same as before
we do the backward induction no difference the only uh, thing that we take into account here is the dividend yield and that obviously affects the risk neutral probability so as we mentioned previously the way we estimate the risk neutral probability when there's a dividend yield being paid is this 0 0.03 gets introduced for dividend yield and that's what we reported in the original question as being the yield okay and for the American option same as before we get to this point here but we have to take into account is it optimal to exercise early and in the case of a put option uh, if the stock price fell to 240 it is optimal to exercise because the exercise value intrinsic value of the option exceeds the holding value of the option and the holding value is given by induction okay so to exercise immediately we would subtract 240 away from 300 and that would give us six is because that's superior to the 5585 we use that 60 and that gives us this elevated value then for the value of the American option of 3042. Okay, so as before for the European option, we use 5585. For the American option, we use 60. Otherwise, these two expressions, this expression and this expression are the same. It's just that we take advantage of exercising early at the middle node. And that then drives the value of the option up to 30.42.75 as opposed to the European value of the option which would have been 28.52 now to look at this a little bit more in terms of detail European versus American options uh, we can go back to some code that we had okay so we might take a look here and we had seen this in the previous video where basically when we ran these parameter estimates we got value for Cox Ross Rubenstein using 100 steps uh, for European call, European put, American call, American put. And the value of the European put uh, was seen here to be inferior to the value of the American put. Also, the European call and American call seem to be identical. And that's consistent with theory when the dividend yield, there's no reference here for dividend yield. If the dividend yield is zero, the European call and American call uh, produce the same values. Now let's examine a little bit the effect if we introduce a dividend here uh, on the option. So a simple one is just to put in a reference for Q. And Q we could say just simply is equal to 3%. And we use a semicolon. And the only thing we really need to change here is that the risk neutral probability when we include a dividend yield into Cox Ross Rubenstein we've got to adjust the dividend the risk neutral probability to take account of that Q so we'll just put it in and also just maintain the bracketing here a little bit so we'll put a bracket in to that the bracket square off and otherwise we don't actually change um anything else here so in the backward induction that remains the same as before um th everything uh, would remain as is okay so we've included q in our representation here in our parameter inputs and then when we come down to the binomial function right uh, we see out the european uh, call put American call American put so let's just run that the results we have here is the the value of the European call and American call are the same put in it including a different yield then let's just observe the effect here on that so let's just run we've only 100 steps so it should be fairly fast it won't be too okay and when we look at that we can see the value of the American call here is actually superior to the European call and so our contention that the American call and European call produce identical values is only true when the dividend yield is equal to zero. In this instance, the dividend yield has gone to 3%. So if we take away our tree and run that again, what we'll find is that the 
value of the European option, European call and American call are the same, include in the dividend and we then run the risk. So let's put in a tree here for a moment. Okay, delete. Um, zero three or zero five, even make it slightly higher and observe the effects again of zero five percent dividend. Here, the difference now between the European call and American call will be even more drastic. Uh, European call and American call, there's a good 20 cent, 22 cent difference between both uh, values. The American call being worth more. Okay, so uh, maybe we can demonstrate that a little bit differently if we go back to um, looking at some of the boundary conditions. Uh, if there's no dividend yield, this is basically true. The value where lowercase c here denotes European option. We can say from arbitrage, um, no arbitrage relationships, that the lower bound on a European call is this S minus X, the stock price minus the exercise, where the exercise is discounted. And um, we, we could assume, perhaps, that given that the American option has more exercise rights, that the American, this capital C, uppercase C, is greater than lowercase, greater than the European option. However, given that the um, lowercase, the European option, has this boundary, and given that an American option, if exercised early, is S minus X, generally we, we could say it is safe to say that this value here is worth more than the intrinsic value. So the lower boundary on a European option exceeds the intrinsic or immediate exercise value on an American option. And under such circumstances, it just makes no sense to exercise early. Why would you accept this when you could, just by holding the option, uh, have that value? Okay, so maybe to look at that in a little bit more detail, we could insert uh, an equation here. And I'll just try to replicate. We have C. I might just write it out here. I'll pause. Okay, so for an, a European option where there's a dividend yield, then we can say the value of the option, the lower bound, is no longer given by S minus X E negative RT. That only applies when there's no dividend. With a dividend, the value of the, the lower bound on the European call option is S E negative QT minus X E negative RT. Now, if that's the case, it's no longer clear that this value here is inferior, inferior to this lower bound. This new lower bound, once a dividend yield has been introduced, um, may well actually be inferior. So long as there's a Q here, it tends to reduce the value of S, the negative power, when we take the exponential multiplied by S, then that's lower which in turn reduces the lower bound on the European option and exercising early may suddenly become optimal. So in circumstances where a dividend yield is paid, the value of the American option, American call option, may exceed the value of the European uh, call option. Otherwise, if, if, the, if there is no dividend, the value of the Amer American call call and European call uh, will be the same.